Hey DCC, and welcome to another edition of Morning Coffee. Well, sometimes uh, pastors and, and, and teachers um, talk about things in their lives where they've learned an important lesson and now they're getting it right. I am going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to tell you how I'm getting it wrong. And there's no silver lining at the end of, hey, Pete's doing a great job, or I learned a lesson and now I'm turning around. This is something that I'm constantly battling with and I need to do a better job. And as of right now, I would give my performance um, a D or an F. Okay, so let's get started on my report card. So uh, last night is probably a good place to start. Um, yesterday I was just kind of lethargic and I don't know, I, um, we ran out of coffee at the office and I don't know if that contributed um, to it and I just didn't have enough caffeine or something, but I just felt like just whipped. And so I was trying to figure uh, figure out what to do and and how to get some energy and so in in the office I'm preparing to go away this weekend um, to the crucible and so uh, For me, I just had a bunch of stuff piling up and so it was just very um, Time-consuming and busy and it felt like I had a thousand things on my to-do list now all that said I eventually got to the point where I said, you know what? I just need to call time out and and so as it got later in the afternoon I just you know jetted my wife said hey, I can pick you up, and so I went home. And here's where my <laughs> mistakes start to happen in a bigger scale. And so I went back and, um, and there was an opportunity where my wife uh, wanted to spend um, some time with me, and she wanted, you know, because she knows I'm going away this weekend, and she really wanted just to have me and her time. And, um, I go, you know what, I'm just exhausted. I'm gonna throw my headphones on, kick up in a recliner, and, and just chill for a little bit. So that starts this, this bad slide, right? And then um, later on, my, my daughter, Brianna, calls, and she wants to talk through, and she's kind of freaking out. She's getting her first car, and she has to go through insurance. She had all these questions. But again, I had just you know kind of sat down, was gonna grab a cat nap or something, and so I was like, oh, you know, Shara, can you, can you get this? This is, I'm just exhausted. So my wife, you know, takes the call from Brianna and uh, walks her through um, this insurance process. And that takes a number of times. So then um, I finally kind of get a little cat nap and I walk out and, you know, I'm sitting there grabbing a bite to eat and I see uh, my wife and she's at the table and she's going over homework with Sebra and she's spinning there. And so I just, you know, I sit down on the couch, still kind of, you know, groggy and whatnot and watching her. And, um, you know, um, I could have easily had opportunity just to say, hey, you know, let me get this. You, you let me, you gave me a spell. And said, I just sat there, right? And then after the homework was completed, uh, my daughter comes over and she's like, Dad, let's go, let's do this. Do, 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 do. And again, I was like, hey, sweetheart, let's just make sure you got your stuff ready for tomorrow and whatnot. And so I didn't spend um, good time with her. And this isn't an everyday occurrence, but it is way too common um, of a practice that's happening um, at, at my house and in my life, right? And um, as I was sitting down and, and reflecting on how crappy I was and starting to, to, you know, God starts working in my heart and I start feeling guilty and I feel horrible and I'm, and, and I'm like, okay, you know, I've got to stop doing this. I've got to be more proactive. Um, I was reminded of this whole life of Jesus. And so in Luke 19, you know, you, you, you kind of see Jesus' mission is to, to serve those he came to seek and to save. And, of course, that's exactly what I needed, right? I needed a Savior um, who was going to seek me out, that was going to be, you know, just pursue me and love me and kind of be that hound from heaven who's chasing after me. And, um, like, I just couldn't get away, right, of, of, from, from Jesus and how much he loved me and his, his good news and his gospel. And then as I go through and I look at like John 13, I see Jesus when he's teaching his disciples, you know, you have that whole scene where he's washing the feet um, of his followers and he's scrubbing his followers, you know, filthy feet, you know. We probably have no idea how nasty 
you know, first century feet were. Um, I can imagine that they, you know, besides just stinking, there's all kinds of stuff that's probably wrong with those those things. And he's down there and, and cleaning their feet and washing their feet and doing that. And as I look at that, I see this thing within, here's Jesus, the very son of God, who, who could have said, you know, like, hey, I'm not going to exert myself. Like, you guys are, you know, here to, you know, I'm the king. The king's in town, baby. You know, and and have all these people serving him. But instead, he reverses everything, flips it up on its on its head, and says, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be actively serving. And sometimes we make note of that. We, we, we talk about foot washing, and we talk about things. And there's occasions where we might, you know, like, hey, there's a group of pe- group of guys who are going to help this lady move. Let's go serve. Um, but in the day-to-day moments where we could take pressure off of our wife, where we could spend some time with our kids, where we could help them with their homework, even when we're tired, even when we feel exhausted. And how many times um, you may be a, a military spouse, right? And your husband or wife are deployed or they're off doing something and you're stuck and you're and you're making those sacrifices right and then the husband or wife comes home from deployment and they're exhausted but how many how much opportunity is there for them to recognize that hey hey this spouse was was home alone uh, with no help cleaning dishes cooking um, taking kids to the park doing all these things and and you need to step it up right no matter how exhausting it is and so that's one of the things that I wanted to um, share with you is that God never asks us to do something um, that he doesn't empower us to do. Uh, you might have remembered um, a few morning coffees ago, we talked about that term bless. What does it mean that God blesses us? And I said, I hate the word bless, but I'd rather use the word empower um, because then it kind of differentiates, you know, hey, God, bless this food. And what, well, what, is it, what are you asking God to do? Sprinkle you know, magic pixie dust on the food. That's not what bless means, right? But when I use it appropriately, he is going to bless me. He's going to empower me to accomplish something. And and he's going to accomplish something in my life. And to some people that was um, having children and to some people that was, you know, conquering nations or, or defeating their enemy or, you know, you fill in the blank. But in there, it was a participation and a partnership with God. And so, I want you to see that God just doesn't partner with you on these big, huge things, right? God partners with you on the mundane, daily things because they actually, you know, sometimes amount to more than what you think, right? If you constantly sacrifice, even when you're exhausted, and serve your wife or spend time with your kids or, or you know, do those type of things, Think about what they're going to think of you when they're 25 and they're reflecting back, when they're 30 and they're reflecting back, when they have a chance and opportunity to be a parent, what are they going to remember, right? But think about the converse of that. If you allowed work and stuff to get in the way and it crimped your time and you just didn't really spend time, you didn't make time, you didn't really serve them, there's going to be resentment and frustration And unfortunately, we know that sometimes those habits carry over generation by generation and they may become workaholics and they may do the same thing um, to their children and their families, their spouses. So one of the things that I want you to not forget is that God's love um, for us, his, his love for us, empowers us to serve others. And it starts with our home first. It starts there. And it should then blossom outside of there. But we should be understanding that if we're going to make a commitment to serve, God's going to be there to empower us to do so. So just like you'd power through an exercise and five more curls on the preacher curl bent or on the pre- preacher curl station, or you'd you know run a couple extra miles or kick up the the speed on the treadmill and put in extra time, even though you're burning and you're you're dying and you understand the benefit of that, understand that God is going to show up in the moments when you're exhausted. He's going to empower you to be able to do it. And then when you get on the other side of that, when you lay your head on your pillow at night, knowing that you gave 
there's something that you get back, right? There's character that's developed and there's a richness there and you desire to get back and do it again. And so if you can this week, try to make that a beginning habit. How can you actively participate in serving others and making sacrifices because you know that that's what you're called to do? And God isn't just sitting there throwing these big, huge things at us, never having done them himself. He does this every day. He constantly is there for us and doing things for us, even though we don't deserve it, even though we make it hard uh, to love us. He is always there. So he showed us an example in his earthly ministry when Jesus walked the earth. We need to learn from it. We need to do the same thing. And so I'm speaking to you because when I say we, I'm mostly saying me, right? I need to do a better job of this in my life. And I want you to hold me accountable. So when you come to the garage or see this big redheaded dude at church, I want you to come up and have a conversation with me and see how I'm doing and push me and encourage me and punch me in the arm or whatever you need to do. Um, kick my butt if I'm not doing it right. Okay? Have a good day.